The number two cryptocurrency by market cap is relatively new compared to Bitcoin, but it still has a very interesting history that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. So today we're gonna to dive into Ethereum and everything that's been going on since its inception. If you've been curious how Ethereum came to be and what it's all about, keep watching. Ethereum is the cornerstone of the cryptocurrency world, but its significance extends far beyond digital currencies. It's a platform that has the potential to revolutionize industries and reshape our digital landscape. In this video, we will delve into the history of Ethereum, exploring its origins, its key developments, and the visionaries who brought it to life. We'll examine the challenge it has overcome, the milestones it has achieved, and the bright future that lies ahead. So whether you are a seasoned crypto enthusiast or just starting out your journey, join me as we uncover the story behind this groundbreaking technology. All right, so why did this whole Ethereum thing even start? Well, picture this. Bitcoin is cool and all, obviously. It's very cool. Uh, but it is basically digital gold. It's really good at being simple. And there is a tremendous value in that. But it wasn't designed to do much else. And that's where our buddy Vitalik Buterin comes in. He's a super smart guy who wanted to build way more than just digital cash. He was all about creating a world where contracts could run themselves without needing some big company or government to be in charge. Imagine a world where you could buy a house or a car with a smart contract that automatically transfers ownership when you pay up. No paperwork, no middlemen, just pure efficiency. That's the vision behind Ethereum. It's about giving power back to the people. It's about creating a platform where anyone can build anything without asking for permission. So we've established that Bitcoin was born out of a desire for something more than just digital currency. Now let's talk about the early days. It was a wild ride, let me tell you. The mastermind behind it all was Vitalik Buterin, the visionary who penned the Ethereum white paper. He was also joined by Gavin Wood, a technical wizard who translated Vitalik's ideas into the Ethereum code base. There's also Joseph Lubin, the COO who brought business acumen and helped shape Ethereum's direction. Also Anthony Diorio, the CFO, he provided essential financial backing while Mihai Elisi focused on communications and helped establish the foundation. Charles Hoskinson also played a crucial role in the early stages, contributing to fundraising and legal structure. Together, this powerhouse team laid the groundwork for Ethereum. To fund this ambitious project, they turned to the crowd. In July of 2014, Ethereum held an ICO, also known as an initial coin offering, where investors could purchase Ether, or ETH, in exchange for Bitcoin. It was a groundbreaking move at the time. And the ICO was a resounding success, raising over $18 million in Bitcoin. This substantial funding was instrumental in transforming the Ethereum vision into a reality. Now to oversee this ambitious project and manage the funds raised from the ICO, the Ethereum Foundation was established also in 2014. It's essentially the backbone of the entire operation. Think of it as the guiding light for Ethereum. Based in Switzerland, the foundation's role is crucial. They're responsible for supporting the core development of Ethereum, fostering the growth of the Ethereum ecosystem, and educating the public about this exciting technology. They also manage the funds raised from the ICO to support various initiatives and projects. It's a big job, but they've been instrumental in shaping Ethereum into what it is today. All right, let's talk about the big day, the launch of Ethereum. This was a monumental moment for the crypto world. It was like watching a rocket take off, full of potential and full of uncertainty. The initial launch called Frontier was basically a test run. It was rough around the edges, but it was a start. The real game changer came with Homestead. You can think of Homestead as the first stable version of Ethereum. It was like graduating from training wheels. Now, what made Ethereum so special? Well, it was all about smart contracts. These are basically self-executing contracts with the terms of the agreement directly written into code. 
No need for middlemen or lawyers. Well, maybe just a little bit. Uh, but let's not forget about decentralized applications or dApps. These are apps that run on the Ethereum blockchain, not on a central server. It's like a whole new internet built on blockchain technology. Now let's talk about the DAO. This was a groundbreaking experiment that aimed to redefine how we think about organizations. The DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization, and it was essentially a digital investment fund running on Ethereum. Investors could pool their funds collectively and decide how to allocate them. It was all governed by smart contracts, meaning there was no central authority making decisions. It was a bold experiment in decentralized governance. Now, unfortunately, the DAO story took a dramatic turn. A vulnerability in its code was exploited, leading to a massive hack. Millions of dollars worth of Ethereum were stolen, and this incident sent shockwaves through the crypto community and raised serious questions about the security of smart contracts. So needless to say, the DAO hack was a major setback for Ethereum ecosystem. It raised serious questions about the security of smart contracts and the overall viability of decentralized systems. The crypto community was in turmoil, and this I do remember quite clearly. Faced with this unprecedented challenge, the Ethereum community had a tough decision to make. They could either let the stolen funds disappear or they can take drastic measures to recover them. This led to one of the most controversial decisions in crypto history, the hard fork. Essentially, the Ethereum blockchain was split in two. One chain, which became known as Ethereum, implemented a change to reverse the hack and return the stolen funds. The other chain, now known as Ethereum Classic, continued without the change, preserving the original blockchain. It was a divisive issue, but ultimately the hard fork to recover the funds prevailed. Now, Consensus is a name that often pops up in the Ethereum ecosystem. It's a software company that played and continues to play a pivotal role in Ethereum's development and adoption. Consensus was founded by Joseph Lubin. Remember that name? He was also one of the founders of Ethereum. Uh, Consensus has been instrumental in building the infrastructure and tools necessary for Ethereum to thrive. They've created products and services that make it easier for developers to build on Ethereum and for users to interact with the platform. One of their most well-known contributions is MetaMask, a browser extension that has become synonymous with interacting with Ethereum. It has significantly lowered the barrier to entry for many users. Consensus has also developed Infura, a platform that provides reliable access to the Ethereum network, and Truffle Suite, a development environment for Ethereum. These tools have been essential for developers, accelerating the pace of innovation on the platform. Beyond these tools, Consensus has been involved in various Ethereum-related projects and initiatives, contributing to the overall growth of the ecosystem. Now, while Consensus has undeniably played a crucial role in shaping Ethereum, it's essential to acknowledge potential concerns and criticisms. There's one common point of discussion is the centralization risk. As a dominant player in the Ethereum ecosystem, Consensus holds significant influence. This raises questions about the degree of decentralization within the network. Over-reliance on a single entity can potentially compromise Ethereum's core principles. Another aspect to consider is the potential for conflicts of interest. Consensus's business interests may sometimes align with a broader Ethereum ecosystem, but there's also the possibility of competing priorities. This could impact decision-making processes and resource allocation. It's important to maintain a balanced perspective. Consensus has undoubtedly contributed immensely to Ethereum's success, but it's equally important to foster a diverse and competitive ecosystem to ensure the long-term health of the platform. The journey of Ethereum has been marked by significant milestones that have shaped its evolution. Let's fast forward to some of the key moments that have defined the platform. There was the formation of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance in 2017. That was a pivotal moment. It brought together businesses and enterprises to explore Ethereum's potential for real world applications. And then came the ICO boom of 2017, three years after their own ICO, 
which saw a surge of interest and investment in Ethereum. This period also witnessed the rise of decentralized applications or dApps, showcasing Ethereum's versatility. You guys remember CryptoKitties? A seemingly simple game took the world by storm in late 2017. While it might sound trivial, it highlighted Ethereum's potential for non-financial applications. It also exposed scalability challenges. Now to address these challenges and enhance the network, Ethereum underwent several upgrades. The Constantinople and Istanbul upgrades in 2019 were crucial steps in improving performance and security. A monumental shift occurred in 2020 with the launch of the Beacon Chain, marking the beginning of Ethereum 2.0. This transition to proof of stake consensus mechanism was a major leap forward in terms of energy efficiency and scalability. And finally, in 2022, the merge was completed fully transitioning Ethereum to a proof of stake system. This was a historic moment for the entire crypto industry. Ethereum 2.0 is more than just an upgrade. It's a complete overhaul of the Ethereum network. The goal is to address the scalability challenges that have plagued the platform with the core concept being sharding. Now imagine splitting a massive database into smaller, more manageable pieces. That's essentially what sharding does to the Ethereum blockchain. By dividing the network into multiple shards, each handling a subset of transactions, we can dramatically increase the network's capacity. Another crucial component is the shift from proof of work to proof of stake. Instead of miners competing to solve complex puzzles, validators stake their ether to secure the network. This is more energy efficient and allows for a more decentralized system. Maybe, yet to be proven. <laughs> The Beacon Chain launch in 2020 was the first step in this journey. It introduced the proof of stake mechanism and laid the groundwork for subsequent phases. While the merge, again completed in 2022, marked a significant milestone, it's important to remember that Ethereum 2.0 is a multi-phase process. There's still work to be done to fully realize its potential. Now the future of Ethereum is undeniably bright and data supports this optimism. Let's delve into some key metrics. First, we have developer activity is a crucial indicator of a platform's health, and Ethereum boasts a robust developer community. While exact numbers can fluctuate, platforms like Electric Capital and GitHub provide insights into developer activity if you'd like to check it out yourself. Second, the Ethereum blockchain is incredibly active. Millions of transactions are processed daily and the number of smart contracts continues to grow exponentially. This level of activity underscores Ethereum's dominance in the blockchain space. However, it is essential to acknowledge the challenges and network congestion and high gas fees have been pain points felt by anyone using it. But with the implementation of Ethereum 2.0 and the potential of layer two solutions, these issues are being addressed. The future holds immense promise and we can anticipate an explosion of decentralized applications from DeFi to gaming and supply chain management. Ethereum's ability to adapt and evolve will be crucial in determining its long-term success. NFTs and DeFi are two of the most exciting and rapidly evolving applications built on Ethereum. So let's dive into some of these specific use cases. NFTs have exploded in popularity, going beyond digital art and collectibles. We're seeing NFTs being used for digital identity, verifying ownership of digital identities such as social media profiles or online gaming avatars. They're also used in real world assets, RWAs, tokenizing physical assets like real estate, cars, or even fine art, allowing for fractional ownership and easier trading. They're also used for ticketing, creating unique non-transferable tickets for events, preventing counterfeiting and scalping. They're also used for supply chain management, tracking the provenance of goods, ensuring authenticity and transparency. We also got DeFi or decentralized finance is revolutionizing the financial industry by offering lending and borrowing, peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms without intermediaries, allowing users to earn interest on their crypto assets or borrow against them without giving up custody. 
Uh, also, there's decentralized exchanges or DEXs, platforms that are trading cryptocurrencies without relying on centralized exchanges, offering greater control and security, and also cutting out that third party risk. Uh, derivatives trading also is available through DeFi, creating financial instruments like futures and options on blockchain, providing new investment opportunities. There's also involvement of insurance, offering decentralized insurance platforms where policies are written as smart contracts and payouts are automated. Now, these are just a few examples of the countless possibilities offered by NFTs and DeFi. And as technology continues to mature, we can expect to see even more innovative and disruptive applications emerge. Thanks so much for watching this video. Now that you know all about the dApps, DeFi, and NFTs that are happening on the Ethereum blockchain, let us know which dApp you're most interested in checking out and which one is your favorite, if you don't mind to share. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hit like and subscribe. See you next time.